Okay, I'm ready to assemble my pegboard to my round and square peg, and I'm even going to add the sides onto this one. So pay attention, and so when you do finish uh, constraining your round peg and your square peg within the pegboard, hold tight. There will be an addition to this tutorial at the end that will include putting both sides onto your pegboard. So let's go ahead and start an assembly. So from here, there's always a couple ways to do it, but I like going up to the new. Click on it, and let's select a standard IAM, which is an assembly. Once you do that, your ribbon will change, and you now have a place menu. Click the place, and let's go ahead and find that pegboard. Let's put it in first. It should be saved in your uh, pegboard folder. So I'm going to go ahead and place the pegboard. And I only want one, so you can hit the escape button to get that other one out of there. And then I want to go ahead and ground this so it doesn't move. So all you have to do is anywhere on the pegboard, go ahead and right click, go down to the word grounded, and you'll notice that it really doesn't look like anything happened here on the pegboard itself until you move your cursor over and you can see the grounded symbol. And also, you notice that it's grounded over in your browser. Okay, now we're ready to bring in one round peg and one square peg. Click the place button. Go ahead and find it in your H drive. Now we'll go ahead and put the round peg in. Set it somewhere close to the opening. Hit the escape key. And I'm going to go ahead and place one square peg. And hit the escape key. And I'm ready to go. Okay. So now we're going to use something called the constraint tool. And we're going to use the mate constraint. And right now our solution is just a simple mate. And what you want to do is mouse over your uh, round peg. Make sure you get that center line that shows up. Go ahead and click on it. And then your center line will turn into a nice little blue line. Then mouse over the opening and you'll notice you'll also get a center line. Once you do that, click on it. And you'll hear a snap. That means that you've successfully mated your part. Once you're satisfied, click Apply. And then I always like to exit out of the menu so I can test it. So if you do ground that, it should go up and down freely within that space. Now, the square peg is a little more difficult, but not impossible. We have to go ahead and mate two adjacent sides to their corresponding sides in the actual pegboard. So first thing I'm going to do, and you have to become really familiar with the orbit tool here or your view cube. Either one will work. Just go up to constraint to activate the menu again. We are using this mate function. And all you have to do is mouse over the part that you want to, or the face, I'm sorry, that you want to mate. And go ahead and click and select it. Then I'm going to use that orbit tool to move my part around. I'm going to go ahead and make sure to mate it to that opposite face there. Now it will snap too, and if you do apply it and exit out, you'll notice that we still have it moving. We don't want it moving around. So I'm just going to move it back where it was. Select my constraint tool one more time. And it, we're already in to the mate uh, section here. So just go ahead and click on this face here. That is adjacent to the face we just clicked on. I'm going to use my orbit tool to make sure that we can see the face which is opposite it. So we can actually click on that and made it. And just mouse over till you got that particular face. Go ahead and click on it. And apply. And again, exit out of the menu so you can test it. I'm just going to push my home tab here and just grab that and it should go ahead and slide freely up and down. So once you get that done, now it's time to make your sides. So at this time, if you haven't made your sides yet, you can go ahead and stop the video, go make your sides, and then you can come back to the video once you have made your sides and we're going to go ahead and uh, assemble those to the size of our pegboard. For those of you that are ready, here we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and place uh, two of my sides. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one and put it on this side and pick the other one, put it over here, and then hit escape. And again, your orbit tool is your friend here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and constrain this face here to the inside or opposite face that you see of your actual side. 
There we are. Go ahead and click it. And you're all set. Go ahead and apply. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this piece. I'm going to exit out of the menu. I'm going to move this piece up just a little bit so I can see that top face here. I'm going to zoom in. Go back to constrain. Get that face. Go ahead and make sure I click mate. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the top, which is that opposite face. And it will go ahead and mate to the top there. And I'm going to make sure I apply. Don't forget to do that. I'm going to exit out, and I'm going to see that if I grab it, it still kind of slides back and forth. So now we're going to do another constraint, but this time we're going to do what's called a flush. It's going to basically get this face here and this face here even. So you, you go ahead and let me start that again here. Click on flush. Make sure you get this particular face. You can click anywhere on it that you want. And then you click on this face here, the side of your side, and it'll go ahead and flush to that other part, then apply it, and I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of this menu just to test it. And that should be nice and locked in place, and it is, it's not moving anywhere. So let's do it to the other side. So again, just use your constraint tool, and we're going to be on the mate. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here, and use my pan tool to grab my pegboard and bring it over. I like to move this out of the way too. And then I'm going to use my orbit tool so I can see the face right over here. And I'm going to click on it. Then I also want to click this one because it's facing the opposite direction. But when I do select this face right here, that will turn around. You'll notice that it just turned around. Okay. Now let's see if you can remember what we do next. If you can't, well, here we go. I'll show you. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and hit my home tool and use my zoomer tool. Don't forget to apply. And then let's go ahead and exit out of the constraint tool for a moment. And just turn this around. And let's move this away just a little bit here. Okay. So select constraint again. Select the top. That might be a little difficult to get to here. But I'm going to go ahead and find my part here. Here's probably will be a little easier to find. Use my orbit tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and select that part right here. And apply it. Bring it over. You notice that I'm not flushed yet, so I have to select the flush tool here and select those two faces that I want to actually flush. And now that they're all even, go ahead and apply it. It might take you a while, again, to kind of orbit around and find that part. Just make sure that you're first using the mate tool and then finally using the flush tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the home button here and exit out of here. And this is test this part, and it is indeed locked, but these parts should still be moving. And there you are. There's a quick tutorial for connecting those sides to your pegboard toy. I hope you have some success and I hope you enjoyed it. Next you're going to be making a mallet head for a mallet that's going to be able to pound these pegs into the holes here.